All right, we're in beautiful Key West. We've got a little blustery conditions today. We got a nice little black fin here. Hopefully it's a black fin. That's what we've been chumming up for. Yeah. Got Captain Greg Shirts here out of Key West. How's it going? Oh yeah. We're giving these fin number 20 spinners here a test today. Ugh. Yeah, they hold up against these little footballs <laughs> on steroids, I guess you call them up. Huh? Oh yeah, we got a free jumping back here again. What do you uh when you describe to your clients? What kind of what kind of pull these things have? What do you what do you try to describe to them? Pretty much down and dirty. They make that run and they just sit down there and hold on. Oh, what an run! They go. What's the uh, what's the what's the biggest ones you catch? See, my biggest fish is 37 uh, on 30, which I believe was an all tackle. That's... 42, I think, is out of Bermuda, and I had uh, world record on eight pound uh, spin with women's 30. <laughs> Eight six. So the black the black fin are a smaller breed of tuna. They're not like the big granders you get. No. Uh, off of, you think yeah. they would be with this light tackle on them? <laughs> uh, yeah, we get occasional yellow fins coming through here. Uh, this time of year, they've seen a few. Nobody's really caught one that I know of. Yeah. But pretty much the same technique. And we'll have these 150, 200 pound fish just boiling like uh, that. Which, if you want to have trouble tying a knot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's some people describe those big, those big yellow fins and stuff like trying to reel in a Volkswagen off the bottom. Oh, they are. Yeah, it's pretty much strictly 80. I think that's about what this one here feels like is a maybe a Volkswagen Rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You got a little ways to go. I don't see any color down there yet. No color. <laughs> no color. I tell you, if your average is 12 or 10 or 12 fish like this, you probably wear your clients out pretty quick oh, on them. Yeah, yeah you know it. <laughs> yeah, we just finally got them to turn on for us, so we were doing a little better than we were earlier. Yeah, this one's a chunk here, it feels like. It's yeah, like it's a lot bigger than that other one. Right. Up in the Gulf, they get the bigger fish, I think, maybe because they are uh, easier feeding. Yeah. Uh, just right behind the boats. They, Those ones that chum up, you can smack them with a fly rod, right? Right. What, what they pretty much do is they, uh, when the boats drag at night, they just uh, follow it. Yeah. And in the morning, if the boat doesn't move and just drops anchor and starts culley, yeah. the fish will stay with them. Uh, so they kind of drag over the bottom and pick them up over. There, we got some color down there, about 100 feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, off Canaveral. They do the same thing with the shrimp boats there. They get out behind those things, uh, get underneath the chum of them. About 230 feet of water. Is that what we're in? Yeah, about 231 exactly. About 230. God. I can't imagine what I could compare this to. That's a good run there, though. I don't know. Scoping uh, up a little bit, isn't he? What's that? Scoping up a little bit. Oh, yeah. Man, these things got some power. Say you just want to pick your days when you get out here. Nice little head shake in there. Yeah. Say you only want to do a few of these a day. Yeah. Gotta get that rod bent on now. What a pretty one. There we go. Yeah, probably not. That's a little football. <laughs> a little bigger? Yeah, man. Yeah. Beautiful color here. I think you see the color here. You little slack. Yeah. Yeah, I got a beautiful blue there, if you can catch that there, turn it toward him a little. Let me get rigged up so we can catch another one here. What a fish. I'm gonna show you what we're using here today. We're using greenies we got up on the, up on the real shallow water today. And he's, what we're doing, we're chumming them up out here and just get bringing these fish up off the wreck and you toss these things out to them and just nail them. They slurp them up like, popcorn, but they got a neat smell to them. They smell like watermelon rinds. They're just, they're real awesome fish and you just, you cannot, they don't even smell like a fish. They smell like watermelon rinds. Must be why these sailfish like them so much. Or the black fin tuna. No! Still there? Yeah, he's there. He made a turn back toward the boat? Yeah, he turned somewhere. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. I don't know where he turned, but he turned somewhere. Golly, what a what a run! Oh, I tell you. See, as you can tell, the boat's starting to get a little more crowded here. And yeah. It'll start breaking them out, but we've put a good little hundred on them already. Yeah, it looks like everybody's finally gotten their bait. Yeah. We got lucky this morning. Greg here knows the secret bait spot. We're right here. <laughs> we're right here before any of these guys were. 
But hey, with all the other boats out here with the conditions like this, with them chumming, it probably brings the fish up a little better with all the chum out here with everybody, right? Right, unless you get too many boats, and then it kind of scatters and that drive them. Yeah. These things will wear you out. He says we do about six to six to twelve fish of these. God, I'm gonna be sleeping good tonight. Yeah. Frank said after we finish with this thing, we're gonna try to start doing some drifts. There's been a lot of sailfish popping up. We're gonna see if we can tangle with one of these big sails running around out here. Already seen two caught. Yeah, man, what power do you say? I don't want to leave these things too much, though. <laughs> <laughs> kind of changed up a little bit for these tunas. Instead of, instead of anchored up, we pulled the anchor and we're kind of drifting now. We've seen a couple of sailfish, and Greg said we can, we can try for these sailfish the same time we do the tunas. And I think we got a big tuna on here now. This thing has got some pull, brother. Ugh. Okay, let's see if we can get him around on the other side of the boat. I think he dove under that way. Uh, there he goes. All right. Guys, there he comes. Nice fish. God, these things are powerful. Nice. There you go. Nice. Uh, sunscreen in the eyes. Burning. Get you some slack there. There you go. You toss him back. Let him go for somebody else to catch. All right. And this is running. Nice fish. Now go ahead. There we go. He's off and running. There he is. Yeah, buddy. What a fish. Yeah, it's coming. Yesterday when we met up with, uh, with Nick and Greg here, we, uh, we were debating whether or not we were gonna go and try the big sharks first or not. He saw the wind this morning and said, man, we gotta go out and do the blackfin. It's just, it's, it's gonna be happening. So we, we caught bait this morning, got a bunch of bait, and uh, we see him chumming them up out here. We're trying to get these black fins to come up on this wreck. Greg, you told me there's a, what, a German yeah. sub wreck down here? Right, we're in about 212 foot of water. There's a German submarine that uh, went down in the war. They sank it with a blimp. And that's what we're fishing. We don't hope we don't catch it, but it's winter time now, and you, you got to pick your days when you come offshore in the winter time, because you never know never know what kind of conditions you're gonna have day to day. Like I said, we were we had planned on doing the shark thing this morning, but as you can see, we're way out now. It's a little choppy, but I think we're gonna have some fun today. There he is. Yeah, buddy. <sighs> What a fish. Ah. Yeah, it's coming. What a run. What a run. <laughs> That's a fish there, brother. Go, 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 go. You want that run. The bigger the run, the bigger the fish. God, these things are screamers, man. Oh, yeah. So we were looking for the sail, but looks like we got another big old tuna on here so far. Uh, man, these things just got power like you could not believe. I never imagined these tuna had power like this. He's a screamer. Get rod bending and drag screaming television right here, brother. God, my. Unbelievable how powerful these things are. We're gonna throw Cam Greg's number up here a little bit later in the show. So y'all be ready to write this down. This is a ball, you, this is something you just got to do. Uh, especially when you're freezing up there up north. Hey, I'm breaking a sweat here. It is what, January what? Ugh. Yeah, I got some color down there. God. This is the toughest one of the day here. <laughs> He's got a little tired or two. Yeah, I ain't gonna wear me out a bit. God. Yeah. Come on, baby. Yeah, there he is, about 40 feet down. Yeah, we're gonna wait out a little bit. Yeah, it's a beautiful color there. What a fish. They don't wanna get a 
on, baby. Head up, head they, up. Make yeah. little, they make that a little circle. That's a nice one there. Yeah, that's pretty good. There, Woo. there he is. Oh, yeah. There he is. Come on up here, sweet Greg. Yes, he's a beautiful blue. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Send him right up here. Let's get a good look at that fish. Yeah, it's beautiful, aren't they? Look at the eyes on this thing. That thing. They're just eating, eating, swimming machines. Yeah. Beautiful little blue streak there. Yeah! It was a catch. <laughs> God, this thing is powerful. <laughs> oh, shit. What can I say? They're slippery like a fish. Ugh. There you go. <laughs> hook Man, up. what a powerful little fish. These things are a ball. Way up above him. Watch him when he gets it. Okay, he's got it. There he is. Come on, head. <laughs> The Florida Keys have the sights and sounds of a fisherman's dream. The combination of the fishing and scenery makes for some good therapy in the middle of winter. We pulled across the backcountry and rode the swells of the ocean, and I'll never forget our trip to the Florida Keys. Our Key West introduction was a hair-raising experience. Scott Culpin took us to the outer flats for Barracuda. I've caught a lot of Cuda in deep water, but to experience their speed, their power, in three feet of water, incredible. Here he comes. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Woo! Nice fish, yeah, nice fish, yeah, nice fish. Yes! That's Woo! a king daddy there, brother. Watch the boat, watch the boat! Woo! You going around, going around back? That's a king daddy there, Woo! brother. That's the one we've been yeah! after right there. Scott ties up his own two blures, and the cuda just tear him up. If you're the type of angler looking for some fast action, these winter cudas are a blast. The next day on the water, the wind was howling, so we anchored up at Sambo's, a reef located just offshore Key West. Nick Melanowski chummed up a big school of fish behind the boat. We sat there and caught a ton of fish. We lost count by noon. Back at the dock, the big zero mackerel weighed in at 12 and a half pounds, three quarters of a pound shy of the current IGFA record. What did he go, about 12? About 12 pounds. Man, what a fish. That's gotta be the biggest zero. That's a heck of a zero, yeah. yeah. In the deep waters, 30 miles off Key West, Greg's shirts put me on some of the strongest fish I've ever challenged. For their size, blackfin tuna really scream off the drag, and they'll fight you all the way to the box. There he is. There he is. Come on up this way, Greg. Yes, he's a beautiful blue. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Send him right up here. Let's get a good look at that fish. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Look at the eyes on this thing. That thing. They're just eating, eating, swimming machines. The only downside to the Keys is having to leave. While heading home, we noticed the winds that drove us off the water in Key West were non-existent in Almorada. It had turned into one of those afternoons that you just have to get out on the water. Sixty foot, about one thirty. Moving to the right, cast to the right. Little bonnet head cruising, way up above him. Watch him when he gets it. Okay, he's got it. There got he is. him. All right. <laughs> Look at that booger run. <laughs> oh, quick thinking, Blair. I'll tell you what, man. 
I sure am glad y'all talked me into stopping again so we can go out and catch some more fish. Who had to talk you into anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. All you did was say, look at that water. I said, well, let's go. <laughs> we were gone. <laughs> These things, man, this guy's got a little uh, spunk to him. In this cold winter water. Yeah, well, that oxygen level's high. They're ready to roll. A little bonnet head. Look at him fight. He was tearing the drag off. Hey, they're good to scream out the drag here for a little bit. A lot of people confuse these things with a, uh, with a hammerhead shark because of the way the head is. But as you can see, it doesn't have the great big hammers on the head like a uh, like a hammerhead. This one's called a bonnet head, and he's right in the corner of the mouth. Come on, <laughs> let me see those pliers. Yeah, here you mouth. go, man. <laughs> he's smiling, but I don't think he's too happy. He, little bonnet head. These things are these things are a ball. Look at that. He broke the hook. Let him keep that one. See you later, Mr. Bonnet head. Like I said, we were on our way home. We just couldn't pass it up. Let's get another one, man. Let's do it. The winter time down here, the bite can be kind of slow. So we're using live shrimp, and I'm going to show you how to we rig them weedless here. We've taken, we just kind of snip the tail off of it, come up the top, pull the hook all the way through, and then back inside the top of the shrimp. That way it makes it totally weedless. It looks like he's just crawling along the grass. Oh, he's Ooh, on, he's it. on it. Here, you got it. Oh, awesome. Oh, <laughs> shark in the flat. <laughs> Good job, Blair. Very sharks. Oh, he's coming to me. <laughs> he was going to ram that shrimp. <laughs> He ate the shrimp. Little uh, DOA shrimp? Yep, <laughs> little DOA guy. He loved it. Jumped all over it. It's God, a nice a, little run. <laughs> there's a lot of them in here, look. There's four we were or five right around here. the flats here for the past couple of days. And uh, we were coming up, coming home from Key West and we came up here at Almorada. And we said, man, we gotta get out of the water. Just gotta get out there. So we decided we filled the gas up in the boat, popped out here and it just turned into an absolutely beautiful day. We figured we'd just come out here and have a little fun. <laughs> and we're having some. We're having definitely having some fun. He's big enough to pull on that drag though. Yeah, he pulled on it a little bit. He did a good job of it. You need some help, Larry? You no, I get pliers? it. I need the pliers. Oh, shit. Hang him. Get him right in the side. Funny looking sharks, I tell you. Just a little Almorada bonnet head. Something to have some fun with instead of going home. <laughs> they even give you a smile. They're a blast. Catch our show on the World Wide Web. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anywhere on the planet at AddictiveFishing.com. Man, I tell you, we had a ball down here in Key West. Stopping off on the way back, we saw the nice weather, and when you're addicted to fishing, when you had weather like we had today when we were out catching those bonnet heads, and after catching all them mogans down in Key West, tell you what, we just had a ball. And if you happen to miss it, catch it down on the website at addictivefishing.com. See ya.